What's up guys? With the MCU's next movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, coming out in September, I want to take a look at what exactly the Ten Rings are. Okay, so if you don't know anything about the Ten Rings, they're pretty powerful. And you immediately kind of draw similarities between the Ten Rings and the Infinity Gauntlet, and that makes sense. And if you're asking, are the Ten Rings as powerful as the Infinity Gauntlet? The answer is no, definitely not. Think of the Ten Rings as basically being a mini Infinity Gauntlet. They do share a lot of similarities in power, but the Infinity Gauntlet is massively more powerful than the Ten Rings. And during the Shang-Chi trailer, we actually got to see what the Ten Rings look like and kind of get an idea of how they function. And right off the bat, there's some noticeable differences. And what I mean is differences between how the movie's going to present them and how they were in the comics. To what extent the MCU is going to be making changes to the rings from their source material, I have no idea. But what I can tell you about the rings is their comic origins and their abilities. So let's start off with what we do know from the movie, which is how they look. And in the movie, they're big. They're really big. I mean, they have to put them on their arms just to have them fit. But in the comics, they were just normal sized rings. And they fit all in the Mandarin and 10 fingers. And in comics, the 10 rings, to my knowledge, were never associated with Shang-Chi at all. They were almost exclusively a weapon used by the Mandarin against Iron Man. And I don't mean the Iron Man 3 version of the Mandarin. They gave me plastic surgery. They gave me things. Did you just nod off? The Mandarin has always been an Iron Man villain, but the MCU is going to switch it up so that the Mandarin is actually Shang-Chi's father, which is a change that I like. So let's take a look at how the Mandarin actually comes in possession of the Ten Rings. Now, in the comics, Marvel gives two stories of how the Mandarin gets them. The original story is that the Mandarin was a descendant of Genghis Khan, and after the Communist Party takes over in China, they take away all of his possessions. And the Mandarin goes in search for a new life, and he just starts walking. And eventually he finds himself in the Valley of Spirits, and it was rumored to be the place that China's mythical dragons lived. And as he's making his way through the valley, he falls through a hole and he finds it in this hole is an alien ship and he starts poking around the ship seeing what's there and he notices that the ship is being powered by 10 rings and what's interesting about this origin is that the aliens are from the planet maklu 4 which is the planet that everyone's favorite marvel dragon is from Fin Fang Foom. Now this next part isn't told in Marvel until just last year, but Fin Fang Foom came to Earth in a group with the goal of conquering the planet, but they were actually stopped during a battle with Jing Zhu, who is Shang Chi's actual father in the comics. So that's the original story of how the Mandarin got the rings, but in 2015, Marvel updated his origin story and made it a lot darker. Uh, the Mandarin's mother was a prostitute and a drug addict who eventually overdosed in China, and then he was essentially forced into slavery as a child. And when he escaped, he became a criminal, and with the rise of the Communist Party, he became a fugitive. So he goes on the run, and while he's on the run, he stumbles into a cave in the Valley of Spirits, where he finds the alien ship. So it's pretty similar to the original story. And when he goes inside of the cave, he finds an alien dragon that was wounded during his fight with Zheng Zhu. The Mandarin is drawn to the rings, but the alien tries to warn the Mandarin not to take the rings. Obviously, he doesn't listen, and then he kills the alien, but not before the alien tells the Mandarin why he shouldn't take the rings. This is going to be one of the biggest changes Marvel makes to the rings from how they were originally introduced, but the alien warns that the rings are actually powered by the souls of dead cosmic warriors, who attempt to manipulate whoever is wearing the rings to free them. But the Mandarin says, nah, it's fine, and he takes them anyway. He then spends the next few years training with the rings to be able to master them. So unlike the Infinity Gauntlet, these aren't artifacts that you can just throw on and instantly be able to use them. They, in a way, take some getting used to. And the Mandarin uses them and trains with them so much that he actually imprints on the rings, and the rings kind of see him as their true master. What we also learn about these rings is that they're somewhat sentient. They desire to be together, and they can basically think freely. And this is because they have artificial intelligence, similar to how Jarvis function in the MCU, but the rings, since they're basically part computer, they can actually give themselves updates and continue to learn. Okay, so let's talk about what the powers of the rings actually are. Each ring has its own separate power. Some of these powers are very impressive, while some of the other rings are a little less intimidating. But it's important to note that the rings, unlike the Infinity Gauntlet, can't be used on a universal or even a planetary scale. They're typically only effective in a short range of the user. The ring's powers have also changed throughout the decades in comics. Different comic writers have altered or, or added different powers to some of the rings. So I'm going to base this off what Marvel lists the ring's powers to be. Okay, starting off with the Matter Rearranger Ring. Now this ring has the ability to manipulate the molecule structure of matter. So basically it has limited reality warping capabilities. And this is maybe, if not the most powerful ring out of them all. Next is the White Light Ring, which can emit energy from the electromagnetic spectrum. So this ring can basically just use to shoot beams or it's also very helpful as a flashlight. It also allows the Mandarin to fly by manipulating the magnetic poles, similar to how Magneto can fly. All right, the next ring is the Ice Blast Ring. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Shoots cold air and ice. And instead of this ice is sucked out of the depths of outer space, but it just shoots cold at people. Then there's the Black Light Ring. And this ring allows
allows the user to create an area of complete darkness. So basically it sucks out all the light. And I thought that this ring is powered by accessing the dark force, which obviously comes from the dark force dimension. And then there's the impact beam ring. Now this allows users to shoot concussive blasts or shoot sound blasts, which I guess is pretty helpful. Do you like the Hulk thunder slap? Next is the vortex beam ring. And this might be the worst ring in my opinion, depending on if you're just going off what Marvel currently says it does. And this ring can just create strong gusts of wind that can be used as a weapon or give the user the ability to fly. I'm not sure if this is current, but at one point it also gave the user the ability to slow down time, making the ring holders seem like they're moving in super speed. Definitely is a lot more helpful disintegration ring and it is as powerful as it sounds it can shoot a beam able to disintegrate anything in its path now a ring this powerful marvel basically had to find a way to nerf it so after every time that somebody uses this ring it needs 20 minutes to recharge before it can be used again there's also the flame blast ring similar to the ice blast ring you can guess what it does it shoots fire really not a lot more needs to be said about this the ninth ring is the electro blast ring which is similar to the fire and the ice ring it's basically thor's hammer in ring form it can shoot lightning bolts at people and the final ring and one of the most powerful rings is the mento intensifier ring i admit it's poorly named but it has the ability to mentally control someone or create illusions however it can only affect people if that person that they're trying to mind control is in a very short range of the person and using the ring so it has some limitations to it you can't just mind control the entire world and that's all the 10 rings their powers and their origins so with that i'm going to wrap up this video if you guys like this video make sure you slap that like button if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one peace